Come Over Empire, Season 3, Episode 2, Sin the Demands, and I was definitely looking forward to this episode. As you guys know, I really love last week's premiere. It really seemed like the stakes were high, and most importantly, it really did seem like things were actually going to happen this season. This wasn't going to be something where they start a plot, and then by the next episode, it's kind of gone. No, it definitely seems like they are sticking with it, and that's... The same with this episode, it does seem like they are in fact sticking with some of these plots. However, I don't think this episode was nearly as strong as the premiere. Uh, let me just say, some of the stuff in this episode was legitimately great. I just don't know if I exactly like where they're going with some of the storylines. Uh, I think some of them are just getting a bit too silly, but overall, I really enjoy this episode. But let's just get right into it, because there's not as much to talk about, because this definitely was more of a setting up future episodes kind of episode, and less of a here's everything that happened episode, but uh... Let's just get right into it. Starting off with, uh, we see Cookie. She's being woken up bright and early in the, mor in the morning by a delivery. There's, like, a second delivery. There's another one. I mean, there is a shit ton of deliveries, and she knows exactly where it's coming from. It is, of course, coming from Lucius. He's clearly trying to win her back. She freaks out when this life-size marble lion statue arrives, orders all the gifts be returned ASAP. Now, I don't know if that symbolizes something, but she kind of acted like the marble lion is something important, and I feel like now that we're really getting into their past, I feel like we're definitely going to find out what that all is about, but she obviously wants Maul to be returned, you know, she tell, she's already told him straight out that she doesn't really want anything to do with him. I do kind of like her trying to win her back, though. It's the side of Lucius we haven't really seen before, and I, I really do like that overall. So... I lose this house, he gets quite a surprise when he wakes up too, and Nika has the entire living room filled with nannies, and... She's interviewing them to help her take care of baby Bella. And Lucius kicks all the women out. And Nika whines that she can't raise a baby by herself and that she needs help. And he is not having it, though. He sends Anika to the nursery and tells her that she only has one job to do, and that's to be a mother. Now, one of my flaws in this episode is that the show can't really decide uh, how we should feel about Lucius. You can definitely tell. I mean, there are some scenes where he's trying to be this great father to Bella and provide for her. And then there are scenes where... Where he's being really genuinely sweet to Cookie, so I couldn't really tell what the show was trying to do. Yes, I get it that Lucius has layers. I've known that Lucius has layers, but it just seems like it's one or the other, and that's kind of not exactly working as much as it has, but I did like a lot of the stuff with that there. That plot is not really touched upon. There's only, like, one other scene with that, but yeah, I do agree that she needs to be, you know, a mother and have this job, but the fact that Lucia's telling her that's all she can do and she can't do anything else, I mean, we know why, obviously. It's to protect her from the feds. I mean, we know the whole reason these two got married is so she won't be interrogated and they basically will be okay, and, you know, that she'll be in the clear for what she did. He's also trying to help her cover up, you know, the murder case and everything. So I do like that regard. I just don't exactly know if I like exactly where this is headed, uh, but I thought it was an interesting scene. So Jamal's participating in a radio show, which this is the stuff I really like in the episode. A lot of the stuff I really enjoyed has to do with Jamal. He's in a radio show with a local politician named Angelo Dubois, and uh, who is played by Tay Diggs, who I haven't seen in a very long time. I can't remember the last time I really saw him, but... <laughs> Last time I saw Tay Diggs, now, again, I don't watch a lot of, like, the stuff he's been in, but I know, like, Rent, he was great in that, so it was, it was cool to see him here, I, I like his character so far, but they're discussing the matter of gun violence, and let me just say that I'm not going to say how I feel about gun violence in the show, because I think they're actually handling the topic pretty well. Cookie sits in on their interview, of course, his incident last week where he ran off from stage comes up, and Angelo announces that he thinks that Jamal has PTSD, which he very obviously does. I mean, you can tell that Jamal very much has not gone over what happened, and they get in this actually very heated debate about race, education, opportunities for blacks. I mean, this is very, very heated debates, and I like seeing this. I like seeing Jamal very effective from what happened to him because he's actually affected. It's not just something that they dropped. There actually is after effects of that, and that already is a plus from last season. Last season, something would happen and they just wouldn't talk about it, but this season, at least... Uh, they're actually, you know, mentioning what happened, and there's actually, you know, some being affected by it. So Angela publicly invites Jamal to visit one of his organization's anti-violence summits, which he feel will be best for him, obviously because, again, Jamal just doesn't seem to be in the best state right now. And he, I mean, that's an understatement. He's just not really, you know, wanting to perform right now. So after the interview, Cookie snaps to Jamal. She tells him that he has no time to go to the summit for his organization called Woke because he's supposed to be making new music. I mean, that's what he's always loved to do. Jamal's always loved to make music, but now he doesn't want to. And I think it makes sense. He associates music, of course, with 
gun violence and of course with gun violence comes his family and he, you know we know that whole thing that went on uh in the finale where he wouldn't perform unless uh they would get out of this business obviously they're not out of the business so Angelo ends up cornering Cookie and Jamal after the interview, tells him that he looks forward to seeing them at the summit. Cookie storms off. She doesn't trust Angelo because he's actually way too polite. And yeah, that's kind of a dumb reason, but I get it. I really do. I mean, it's just something about him. It seems like he's being too nice about it. And uh, I think she can tell that definitely there's something more to him. And I think it's interesting uh, where that's going to go. But again... I really do like this overall. I think it's one of the better parts of this episode, and I really did love what they did with that overall. With Shine and Nessa, he isn't too thrilled when he hears that Akeem is working with Shine in the studio. Now, this plot does not really have a lot going on this episode. I mean, we see Shine, but not nearly as much as we did last episode. And that's fine, because again, they're setting things up. He wants Nessa on his tracks. Lucius scoffs that Hakeem doesn't have time to work on new music. He has a baby at home to take care of. And that's something I actually do like that they're setting up. That Hakeem doesn't seem to care much about this baby. And it's a bit out of character, because we saw last season that while he wanted to be with Laura, he wanted to be able to provide for this baby. Why he's not taking care of this baby, I don't know if it's because Laura ran out of him at the altar, and he feels like he should give nothing to Lucius, because he knows it's partially Lucius's baby. Or that he uh, just wants to focus on his music. I don't really know. Uh, the Hakeem stuff's not really working so far this season. I'll say that right off the bat. I don't really think Hakeem, his plot is working as well as it should. But I do like the direction that he's losing his son to Shine. I mean, Shine clearly is someone who wants the best for Hakeem. And he knows what's better for Hakeem. So I kind of like where that's going. But I do like that Lucius doesn't really have control over him anymore. Which is interesting to see. So Cookie then storms into Lucia's office with all the gifts that he sent her that morning. She tosses a diamond necklace on his desk, tells him that he should give it to his wife, and Cookie reminds him of their agreement. It's only strictly business, and that's what she wants. She only wants to be business. And I think a lot of the best stuff in this episode, besides Jamal, is Cookie and Lucia's relationship, because we actually do really get into it. I thought this was going to be something like, um, you know, what happened with Lucius last season, where we were supposed to get all these flashbacks and we got jack shit. But it really seems like we are, in fact, getting a lot regarding Cookie and Lucius's past. And that's something that we haven't exactly known. You know, we've known that, obviously, they came from a criminal background and they had to do some really shady shit uh, when they were younger. But we haven't really known how they met and things like that. And basically, spe Lucius wants to release Jamal's black and white album on his new streaming music. And Cookie tells him that it's not happening. Jamal doesn't want that music out. And that there's better music out there. That Tiana can help them with things. You know, they can get Nessa in on it. I mean, they don't need Jamal. And I like seeing Lucia say that he sees, you know, this uh, this business side of Cookie. And I don't really think we've heard about this before, but Lucia admits in this episode that he really likes Cookie for the business side of her, which is interesting. I don't really think we've heard about that before, and I, I did like seeing that. I mean, what Lucia has for Cookie, it's, it's true feelings. You can definitely tell, and I, I did like that. So Lucius runs in Jamal in the Empire Lobby. He has Angelo with him and an entire group of teens from his woke program. Lucius is uncharacteristically kind. He invites Angelo to hold his summit at Empire Headquarters and says that they're going to pay for the whole thing and stream it on Xtreme. And uh, again, very strange uh, what's going on there. There's even this kid who Lucius allows to rap at Empire. I mean, how out of character is that? But he, you can tell that he obviously has some sort of agenda. He leaves, he whispers to Jamal to have Cookie handle everything and that he has everything planned out. And we don't really know what he's doing. You can tell oh, he's got something up his sleeve. I, I knew that obviously, but you just don't really know what exactly it is right now. But he's not giving up on Cookie anytime soon. We see he heads to her office and plays a beat for her. He says it's for Jamal, but it's actually the first song that Cookie ever rapped for him. That being, you know, when you say he's just a friend... When you say he's just a friend, and we get this great flashback to where she and Lucius were teens, and I think the actors playing Cookie and Lucius, they really got these parts down pretty well, you know, they got that kind of tentative side of Cookie, of wanting to be with Lucius, and seeing that criminal dark side of him, but liking what she sees of him, thinking that he's a talented singer, and then you have Lucius, who wants to pursue Cookie. I don't exactly like what they did with the, t uh, the character of Lucius, I think they could be doing something a little bit more grounded, and less of just, oh, I want to get her, you know, she's gonna be mine, things like that. I like that can-do attitude that Lucius has had, but we kind of got the sense that Lucius hasn't always been this way, and they kind of made it seem like he is, but... I do like where it's his head, and I think the actors playing them, is def they're definitely doing a very good job, especially for two characters we get, you know, two actors we haven't seen before. They really do have these parts down pretty well, and I, I did like what we got of that. 
So, back to his apartment, Andre is definitely not doing good. If there's anyone that's, you know, in the worst condition, it's definitely Andre. And it, it's really just, like I said, um, you know, Trey, uh, I can't think of his last name, but he really is giving his all this season, and I think he's doing a really great job with portraying, you know, a realistic portrayal of grief, and I really do like it overall. He heads to her office, basically, uh, we see he's running around the living room, shouting at Rhonda's ghost, too. It seems like that's gonna be a regular thing that he's gonna see Rhonda, and again, it's basically the guilty um, coming out, you know, the guilt in him coming out. You know, he feels like he's guilty for this. He feels like he could have stopped it. And Jamal walks in, catches him talking to his dead wife. Andre shows Jamal all of his pill bombs, cries he doesn't know what one he's supposed to be taking because Rhonda took care of all of that for him. You know, she always set up all the pills and he doesn't really know what to do. And Jamal gives Andre a pep talk, says that he's going to make him a charge so that he can keep track of his pills. And I really like this. I really like this dynamic overall. We didn't have a lot of that last season. It seemed like Andre was very separate from a lot of what was going on. And towards the second half, they definitely tried to do that, but I don't think they really did enough. So I like seeing Jamal and Andre work together. It's usually very much Jamal and Hakeem, but Hakeem's kind of separated this season. So I like this uh, teaming up overall. I like seeing Jamal genuinely care about his brother, and it shows that even though Jamal is as pissed at Lucius as he is, that's not going to stop him providing the needs for his brother. I mean, he can tell that his brother is very much hurting right now, that his brother really can't help himself, and he needs to do whatever he can to provide for him. I, I really do love, I, that's, I've always loved that about this show. I love the chemistry between those brothers. It's one of my favorite bonds of the show, and I can't wait to see where that goes. Lucius and Angelo in the lobby setting up for the summit for the anti-violence event. Cookie's floored. She ends up snapping at Angelo that she knows that he's using her family. She shouts that he's a joke and she knows all about his DUI from 20 years ago. And we get the sense these two definitely have a past. We just don't know what it is. And uh, Cookie gives, obviously, you know, her typical rant. She stomps off, leaves Angelo totally bewildered. And I like seeing Angelo realizing he's not going to be able to get to her as much as he thinks. But I think we definitely can tell that whatever he has her, I mean, he definitely isn't a guy, is a guy that she can trust. I mean, at least to me, he seems kind of trustworthy. He doesn't seem like someone who is, you know, bad or anything. He seems like a good guy overall. So... The next morning, Cookies woke up bright and early again by Lucius. He brought along their old friend, uh, Limp Biscuit, who actually does sing that song, uh, Just a Friend, to serenade Cookie with the song that she heard him rhyme the first time they met. She enjoys it, and they share the sentimental moment, and then she shuts him down, tells him that she is done again. But again, he gives this really great scene where he talks about how he always saw that music in her, and he tells her how she fell in love, and she says that she fell in love with the music. That's what it was all about. It was the music that drew her to him. It wasn't him specifically, it was the music that he was making, and that's a very interesting direction to go, because it's always seemed like they've had this love, but it kind of makes sense. I mean, why would Cookie hang around Lucia so long? on because she is into the music business and she likes what he's doing with the music it doesn't have to do with the song with him specifically it has to do with the music he's making i think that's interesting overall so everyone's dealing with all their drama hakeem and nessa have spent their last few days in the studio have been cooking up a new song together they might have hit on their hands and shine stops by to check on them and listen to their new music it seems to be going pretty well i don't really like where they're going with hakeem and nessa it seems like she's just going to be another love interest for hakeem and I want consistency in Hakeem's plot because, again, it seemed like Hakeem wanted to actually take things seriously with Laura, but now it seems like he's back to his old Hakeem self, and I don't exactly like that. I want to see more uh, of the Hakeem we saw last year and less of this Hakeem who just sleeps around and makes music. I don't really want to see a lot of that. I don't know if he's sleeping around, but it just seems like Nessa immediately is already getting co cozy with her, and I don't exactly like that. So later that night, it's time for a big event in Empire. Angelo arrives with the woke kids. They perform a song, and Angelo gives this very moving speech, and uh, it looks like Cookie is starting to come around and might actually be starting to develop a bit of a crush on him. You know, she can tell that he actually is genuine. That he actually seems to care uh, about what's going on and basically Lucius then heads up on the stage also gives a speech and talks about everything that they've gone through including the video and basically is trying to get Jamal to perform which honestly I get what Lucius was trying to do here I get it that he was trying to get him to face his fears because yeah the best way to deal with something like that is to just accept it and face it and tackle it head on but Jamal is, is just not ready to do that he's totally on the spot Lucius and the kids start cheering his name he completely starts hyperventilating and this scene was 
incredible. I love the way this was done. The camera pans uh, with Jamal for a while, and it was completely in his perspective, and he ends up running out of the summit. We can tell how he's feeling. I mean, everything's just... Uh, there's the, the sound is going very loud, you know, the sound's loud for him, and everything just reminds him of that gunshot, and it makes sense, definitely. I mean, again, he associates music with the gun, and Cookie chases after Jamal, confronts him, Lucius scoffs, they need to stop acting like this and deal with his problems head on and get back on the stage, and again, I understand that. I really do get where Lucius was coming from with that. The problem is his son's just not ready to deal with that, and it's sad to see, but... That's really what's going on there. Very sad to see. I definitely did feel bad for Jamal because you want to be okay. You want to be able to perform, but it just seems like he's not ready to yet. And I don't know if he's going to be, but I'm sure he will eventually. Just right now, it's just not really the time for him to perform. You know, he can, when he's not performing, he's completely fine. But when it comes time for him to perform, he completely freezes up. And I'm, I'm interested in seeing where that's going to go. So everyone's then mingling. Lucius is still buttering up Cookie, trying to get her to say, oh, you know, we've always worked together. We can still work together. And again, she's trying to tell him that just business. Angelo interrupts their chat. Cookie flirts with them shamelessly right in front of Lucius. Things get very awkward very quickly, and it really does seem like Cookie already is taking a liking to Angelo. I don't know if this is just her telling herself she needs to move on from Lucius and find a new love interest, or if she genuinely does like him, but I think that's interesting overall uh, where that's going. Also, I forgot to talk about this flashback we saw with Tariq that I really enjoyed overall. Um, we saw this scene with Cookie and Lucius, you know, these two, they're going out, and Tariq is there, who we can tell definitely does have feelings for Cookie, but it's their father reprimanding him that he is to not be like Lucius, he doesn't have to be like them, uh, well actually no, not his father, yeah, fa his father, not Lucius' father, his father, telling me he doesn't have to be like Lucius, and that he shouldn't look at Lucius, and that Lucius is just a bad person, and that he doesn't have to go in the same direction as him, just a very interesting story overall, I like where that storyline going with Tariq, and like I said, I'm interested in seeing really what they're going to do with that this season, but then we get this very random, but honestly kind of effective scene where Becky is thrown to see that J-Pop has returned, he tells, and but only to tell her that he's there to leave Empire, and Vaughn gave him an offer he can't resist, he negotiated for Becky to go with him to that label, it's just not safe anymore, you know, Empire's just not really a good place because he knows the feds are constantly after them, and if the feds are after them, obviously they're going to start to get loose to, to lose staff, and Becky, for whatever reason, doesn't want to leave the Lions. I have no idea why. Uh, they treat her like shit. I don't know why she doesn't want to leave them, but... J Papa points out that it is only a matter of time before the feds come through and take the whole label down, and... This scene while very random, was actually some very good character development for Becky, because I've always wondered, why the hell is Becky a main character? We never see her. She's most times just there for comic relief, and in this case, she actually contributed something. So seeing that they're actually doing something with her, I like. Portia, they're still not doing anything with it. Becky, at least, they're trying to do something with it, and I'm hoping that this plot actually goes somewhere. But then we get to the end of the episode where we see Tariq is sitting at home, he's eating a bowl of cereal, and he's watching the live feeds in Bella's nursery, and uh, we don't really know what's going on there, but I'm sure we're going to see more Tariq in the next episode, we just didn't see a lot of him here. Lucius falls asleep with the baby again, and Nika puts her to bed. The baby monitor picks up static in front of Tariq's hidden camera, she realizes that it is some sort of recorder. Lucius wakes up, they put two and two together, he rips the camera out of the toy, and there's definitely going to be some sort of confrontation between him and Tariq. And I like that they figured it out. I like this isn't just, oh, it's just Tariq filming them all season. No, Lucius did find out. He's going to go into again Tariq's face. And I can't wait to see where that's going to go because that's going to be very interesting. Then we get the ending of this episode, which I don't really know if I like the way this turned out, I have to say. Um, Andre is heading to his old house to pack up the rest of his things because obviously there's a lot of damage left in that house. It's very hard for him to do, but... Two cops arrive while he's loading his car. They say that he looks suspicious and that there have been a lot of break-ins, and Andre tries to get the, his ID out of the car. They pull their guns on him, and they slam him on the ground and just straight-up handcuff him, and that is the way the episode ends. It looks like Andre is, in fact, uh, going to court next week, and we'll get into that, but that's how the episode ends, and let's talk about this episode overall. Here's my thing with the end of the episode, is that I do like the way they've set up Andre's plot thus far, with him, you know, grieving over Rana and him having a hard time getting over it. That's very realistic. I like where that's going. There's a lot you can do with that plot. The problem is, I don't want this to just be a police brutality storyline. 
I'm not a fan of those. I don't think you guys want that either. And if you guys have seen a lot of shows lately, it hasn't exactly gone over that great. I think Orange and the New Black got it down pretty well. But Unreal, Empire, these are shows that have no business doing this plot. And I think definitely, I don't want to see him do a police brutality plot. I think it's unnecessary. And I just don't want to see it go down. It's going to get way too over dramatic. It's going to get way too heavy handed. And I think Empire is best when we focus on the family, not on on all this police stuff, but on the family. Tariq is a different story. Tariq's always been in their life. Tariq is Lucia's brother. You can have that going on. That's perfectly fine. But this whole thing with Andre, I don't really know if I like where this is going, but we'll have to see what happens there next week. Um, as far as Tariq, I'm really looking forward to seeing this conversation between these two because Lucius now knows uh, that there are these cameras there. I don't know if he knows that Tariq's behind this. I feel like he has an idea, but again... I'm thinking that, you know, we haven't really seen a scene where Lucius has gone to Tariq since he found out that they were half-brothers. So, that's going to be a very interesting scene to see the way that turns out. I can't wait to see the way that that all goes down. And especially with their father. We know that their father, you know, he disappeared somehow. And they're going to try to figure out what happened to him. So, I feel like that's definitely going to come into play at some point. But we'll have to see what happens with that. The scene with Becky was very random. But I think it's definitely showing that Empire is just not really a safe place anymore. And honestly, I could see the season being the season where Empire ends up, you know, losing most of their staff because it's just not that safe. But we'll have to see where that goes. I think that's going to be very interesting. Cookie, Lucius, and Angelo. Does Cookie generally like Angelo, or is she just doing this for, you know, to uh, make Lucius jealous? I can't really tell. If she's making Lucius jealous, that makes no sense whatsoever because she wants nothing to do with him. I don't know why she'd give him any satisfaction whatsoever. Um... But uh, the right thing to do would be, I think, to just go with Angel because it seems like he damn, he genuinely loves her. She could actually end up with him, and I'm looking forward to seeing really where that's going to go. Jamal, I really love Jamal stuff in this episode with him having this PTSD and him not being able to perform. I don't know how long it's going to last, but hopefully he comes through soon. I just don't really know how long it's going to go, if he's going to be able to perform again. We'll have to see where that's going to go. That's going to be very interesting. Uh, and, and Hakeem, I guess that's the last thing to talk about. Again, Hakeem's plot so far is my least favorite plot this season, just because they're not really doing much with it other than Hakeem and Nessa being together. But you do get the sense that Hakeem isn't listening to his father, he doesn't, you know, Jim, uh, Lucius doesn't really have control over him anymore, and I do like that overall, so I think that's gonna be interesting, and I really do like these flashbacks with Lucius and Cookie, it's really giving us some insight on their relationship, how, um, one side it's really been, because I think we're starting to get the sense that Cookie never loved Lucius in the way he loved her, she loved the music side of him, but she didn't love the man overall, you know, she loved him for the music, she loved him for the potential, she didn't love him for the crime, and... She certainly does not love him for the corrupted, selfish man that he is today, and I like seeing that. I think it's going to be very interesting to see where that goes, how Tariq gets involved, things like that. We kind of get the sense she knows Angelo, so I'm looking forward to seeing where that's going to go. Mariah Carey's on next week's episode. I'm definitely looking forward to seeing that overall. I think she's definitely going to add something, and, we, and I know her character's there to maybe get Jamal out of his slump, but we'll have to see what happens with that. Overall, guys, I'm really enjoying the season. Uh, is it as strong as last week's premiere? No, this was definitely, like I said, more of a slower episode, but I did enjoy it overall. I thought it was very well done. Let me know if you guys saw this episode. Love to your thoughts on it. Are you enjoying the season so far? And I will see you guys. And like I said, I think things are actually going to happen this season. We definitely do see that. But we'll see you guys in the next week, which will be for Designated Survivor. And I will see you guys for that. Okay, bye.